This is an LG 32LD650N, which I picked out of a trash uh, about a month ago. Took home, proceeded to make a very nice video segment about troubleshooting the power supply on, and uh, then deleting the video off of that. Uh, but the short story about this TV is that it had a motherboard fault. I put it aside after troubleshooting the power supply and making sure that wasn't the issue. And then one night I felt like just doing something with it, so I randomly resoldered chips on the motherboard with hot air, and lo and behold, it started working absolutely fine. So either there, there's a failed chip on the motherboard which is going to break again soon enough, or there was just a bad solder joint which. Uh, might have gotten fixed since I used a bit of flux doing the reflowing. But either way, since this TV is now working and I'd like to use it as a secondary TV in my bed, it, I'm not going to settle for those puny little speakers there, so I figured we'd take this thing back apart and have a little play around with the audio amp and perhaps see what it goes for. And if you're a massive nerd like me and want to have a proper view of the model sticker, here it is, pause the video if you're interested. Let's move on. And here are the nuts of the TV, and there's really nothing here which you wouldn't expect. You've got a power supply with integrated backlight driver to the left, which works perfectly. Modern TVs don't tend to get as many bad caps as the older one. This one is made in about 2010. And a main board to the right, and the chip I resoldered were mainly just all the BGAs. I didn't do any testing between resoldering, I just did it to see if it would do anything. And the panel model for this TV is LC320WUGSCA1. I think it's a 1080p panel because well, that, the TV looks good at that resolution, so it probably wasn't the cheapest one you could get. And here's the part of the main board that they're interested in having a look at. This seems to be the audio amplifier IC, and it's labelled NTP7100, and uh, a quick search on the internet uh, yields no results actually, so there isn't really anything for me to go on as far as performance expectations go, but it does seem to be a class D device given the big chokes on the in-series of the output as well as the filtering capacitors following them. And it's a BTL amplifier since we've got four leads going to two speakers. So we're going to have a ground sitting at uh, half the supply voltage, or so-called ground, and we're tapping our output after these four zero ohm resistors there, so let's get this out, get a dummy load in, and have a bit of a look at how loud this thing will actually go. Any bets? I'm putting down about 4 watts per channel into 8 ohms unclipped, and with the original speakers being rated for 10 watts at 8 ohms, I'm waging my bets. And here's our lovely test setup. So, I've just disconnected the internal speakers. I've got the original wire uh, with just uh, some leads poked in going to my switchable dummy load. And on one of the channels, I think it's the right one, I've just got a scope probe clipped on and it's going straight into my HP 339A distortion meter. So, let's just crank this thing and see what it does. We're feeding it a uh, 0.775 volt RMS signal into the analog AV2 input. So let's just play around with the volume control to see if we can affect the level it's putting out. So we are metering the output of the TV. We're at a 1 volt full scale. So right now it seems to be sitting at just about 0.3 volts. So let's turn the load on. And that dropped quite dramatically, so we have a relatively high output impedance on this thing, as you'd expect from such a low-end amplifier. So let's play with the volume control buttons on the TV. Yep, that moves around. Wow, wow. <laughs> the chip is getting quite warm already. And less than a watt, I get, I'm getting about 50 degrees on that chip. <laughs> Wow, this is probably going to run into an overheating condition. And well, let's check the distortion at uh, less than to one watt per channel, so 2.83 volts. Well, that's about 2.8 distortion. Must be easy. 30 kilohertz high pass. Oh, we're sitting at just at. 0.2% which really isn't too bad. That's not too bad at all actually. So let's check the noise level. We'll just uh, turn off the signal. 
go into level metering and see what our idle voltage is and that would be almost 3 millivolts that's a very noisy amplifier way noisier than any of the cheap class D amplifiers you can get from China definitely an order of magnitude worse than the Li Pi even so let's move on to the clipping power I notice it runs off of a plus minus uh, or it runs off of a um, roughly 24 volt uh, supply uh, because we had about 10 volts uh, on the output uh, sitting idle so we're probably going to be in the 10 volt ish RMS range when we start to clip so you want a 10% distortion range let's just uh, turn it up until it clips and there we go we're into the input range so let's see when we start to see some clipping there we now we're hard clipping and we're at uh, 8 volts so yeah, it's a 10 watt per channel amplifier not too bad not too bad at all this seems to have some kind of weird soft clipping feature enabled because it took quite a bit of fiddling around with a the level there to actually get it to hard clip so the TV is just sitting at maximum volume now so let's see how loud we can go before we start to get to much much at all so let's go to the 1% full scale distortion range and uh, just uh, adjust the input level until we get about 1% distortion and I'll call that our clipping threshold that's just just clipping ever so slightly and we're now at uh, 9 volts. If I turn the volume up the soft clipping function takes over and decreases the output. Now I'm actually turning the volume up and you can see it dropping below 8 volts. So we've got about yeah, 9 volts per channel, that's about 11 watts per channel worth of clean power. And that's not too bad, that's certainly usable for a couple of external speakers. So let's do something about that and perhaps add a speaker output. Although since this is a TV, I am curious as to how the frequency response is going to look because they've probably optimized that, in quote marks, for the internal speakers. So, so from the HP to show minus 4 decibels at a, a nominal half output power at 1 kilohertz. So let's see what happens when we turn that down to say 100 hertz. and we're down about 2 decibels at 100 hertz we're down 4 decibels at 80 hertz and we're down by about 10 decibels at 60 hertz so that's not particularly impressive, not particularly impressive at all they are definitely cutting out everything that you would consider to be bass However, since the internal speakers certainly are cutting out uh, way above 60 Hz, I'd wager we are still standing to gain a fair amount by adding a, an external speaker output. And how's the high end? We're now at the 10 kHz and we are up by 4 decibels. 5 kHz, oh dear. Oh dear we're up by a stupid amount a just stupid amount it seems that well, 2 kilohertz we're up by almost 3 decibels 3 kilohertz the same 4 kilohertz a bit more 5 kilohertz we're pegging the meter so more than 4 decibels of gain 6 kilohertz 7, 8, 9, 10 just pegging the meter now it seems to be dropping back down again so let's go above 10k 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 so that, at 15 kilohertz we're back to 0 dB but we've got a giant frequency response notch at about 5 to 10 kilohertz really so that's not particularly impressive either perhaps you can adjust the TV settings to compensate for that Alright, so through, through some rather careful research, I've figured out that the way any DSP functionality in this TV sound system is configured is 
pretty silly because it's basically impossible to get any kind of a flat response out of it. The best I've managed to do is uh, uh, plus f plus minus four decibels from uh, 100 hertz to 14 kilohertz, uh, and it's just got uh, we're at one kilohertz now with the meter, and we're at minus four. But if we go to about to three or 400 hertz, that's 400 hertz. It's just pegging the meter. And that's with all the enhancements set off and the equalizer a bit manually optimized for my intentions. And the same is true if we go to the uh, 5 or 6 kilohertz range, we've got like, yeah, that, that, that's at 5 kilohertz range plus 4 decibels compared to the 1 kilohertz reference as well. And the tone controls are centered at about 100 hertz and about 10 kilohertz, so I really can't do anything about these peaks using the internal DSP of a TV because I can't get access to any more advanced equalizer settings. So all in all, the, sadly, the sound output of this thing is very limited in that it's simply optimized for the internal speakers in the TV, which seem to have a deficiency at 5 kilohertz and three or four hundred hertz and uh, sadly this is going to make any external speakers connected sound uh, well very low treble -y and uh, mid bassy yeah, and that's not going to be very pleasant at all unless I find some very suitable speakers. So in light of that I think I'm not going to add an external speaker connected to this TV it would just gimp any external speakers a bit too much but hey, at least we got to have a bit of a look at uh, the insides of how the audio stuff in a modern TV works. And uh, they certainly have optimized the DSP in the TV for the original speakers. It's not just uh, putting out a flat frequency response to them, not by far. And uh, if I hook them up and listen to some known music on them, they, uh, they do sound relatively flat as long as you're not talking about any high or low frequencies so I really think LG have done the homework and basically flattened out the frequency response of their own speakers and you really can't blame them for that. So what I'm going to do instead since I am determined to hack this thing is to just add an external power output for my Boston acoustic soundbar. If you haven't seen the video on this thing, it's uh, something I also picked out of the trash quite some time ago, and uh, it works perfectly fine now, except for the input select button, it, and it's even got its own remote control, so it'll do an excellent job amplifying this TV. And uh, above all, it's actually made for 32 inch TV, so it'll look great mounted underneath. And we really are in luck about doing that because the power supply rating for the Boston Acoustic Soundbar is 18 volts at 2 amps. And if we have a look at the ratings on the LCD TV supply, we can see that there's a 20 volt rail, which is the one feeding the audio amp. Now, what one's rated for 20 volts at 1.1 amps? And that's going to be close enough to run the same bar, no problems, as long as I don't plan to turn it into a discotheque. And it's a good idea to double check stuff like this, because this is probably a group regulated power supply, and indeed the 20 volt rail is quite considerably higher than it's supposed to be. If I didn't know that the Boston Acoustic soundbar worked fine up to about 25 volts or so, I would be in trouble. And there we go, a little plug mounted sneakily underneath the TV. And here's the entirety of the mod, so I've just got this uh, uh, generic DC connector screwed into the plastic, it's sitting quite tight indeed, with two leads going off to this uh, screw terminal, because I can't be bothered putting a more proper connector in there, uh, from which one wire goes to this little row of ground pins they seem to use for some kind of board identification stuff, and another wire going to this point here, which is the 20 volt rail. So this plug should just be putting out 20 volts DC whenever the TV is on, so let's try it out. Alright, so maybe it's a little DC plug to DC plug adapter from a couple of old wall warts, so let's see what happens. And we've definitely got our 20 volts coming out of there. Correct polarity and everything. And it even goes away when we turn the TV off. So that's perfect. So there you go. That's a trash picked 1080p 32 inch LG TV repaired and 
and modify to power my little soundbar. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio. And if you're curious, that's where the TV finally ended up. Sitting right by the ceiling, in front of my bed. So, I suppose I don't have any reason to ever get out of bed anymore, so I guess this is the last video of the channel. Goodbye everybody, see you never again.